What's up Unleashed Humans? I wanted to take a minute to talk about a game-changing health drink that I recently tried. It's incredibly powerful and cheap to utilize in your everyday life. It is the latest in cognitive performance and free radical destruction. It is, of course, molecular hydrogen water. That's why today's podcast is sponsored by Hyvita's Hydrogen-Infused Sparkling Water, which is the first sparkling hydrogen beverage in the world. Now, I myself have tasted Hyvita's Hydrogen Water. Let me tell you what. It is super tasty without all the nasty artificial flavors, additives, and GMO ingredients. Instead of grabbing for that coffee in the afternoon, I typically turn to Hyvita to give me that midday boost that you can really feel. Now, it's simply water, molecular hydrogen, and magnesium, which many people lack today, and a refreshing sensation from the velvet carbonation. Now, if you didn't know, over 400 published medical studies support ingestion of molecular hydrogen to be a powerful selective antioxidant that improves circulation, athletic performance and recovery, metabolism, and most importantly, cognitive function. It delivers the same amount of antioxidants and even more than an orange without any calories, sweeteners, caffeine, or sugars. Molecular hydrogen has also been shown to help with Parkinson's patients and even promising results in Alzheimer's patients. If you're looking to take your brain, performance, and happiness to a whole nother level, I totally recommend checking out Hyvita Hydrogen Water. That's Hyvita, spelled H-Y-V-I-D-A. And they're inv- available in three flavors, pure, raspberry, or lemon-lime. Now, today, for Unleashed Human listeners, you can get 10% off your purchase of Hyvita by going to Amazon and typing in the promo code UNLEASHED. Again, to receive an extra 10% off, use the promo code UNLEASHED to kick your brain, body, and health into high gear. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Unleashed Human Podcast with your host, Dr. TJ Woodham. Now, today's episode is going to be amazing because we're talking about molecular hydrogen which has been a big topic in the health and wellness space today. And it so happens that my guest today co-founded Hyvita Brands, a hydrogen-infused beverage company, where he invented a method for infusing hydrogen in sparkling beverages. Now, if you didn't know, Hyvita is recognized by beverage industry leaders as a strong candidate to massively disrupt beverage co- categories, such as sparkling waters, carbonated soft drinks, functional waters, and energy drinks. Now, my guest today, also has over 20 years growing high technology companies from startup to thriving enterprises with various executive positions in advanced optics, photonic sensors, and semiconductors. He has strategically sold sophisticated technology to medical imaging, homeland security, defense, and aerospace markets throughout North America, Europe, and Asia. He also holds a bachelor's of science in mechanical engineer and has a master's and business from Michigan State University. And he does all this while also being a family man. Now, I'm super pumped and fortunate to have Rick Smith on the show. Welcome, Rick. Thanks for being on. Hey, my pleasure. I really appreciate, you know, boy, I have to, you made me sound really good there. I don't know if I'm that good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. No, it's, I'm honestly privileged to have you on, man. It's been, it's been a week or so or two that we were trying to get this scheduled, and I'm, I'm really fortunate to have you, man. So my first question here, for you, Rick, is uh, molecular hydrogen has been a big topic right now, like I said, especially in the biohacking and health community. Uh, what is it about molecular hydrogen that everyone wants it now? What, what, it, what is it that they want it for? I think, you know, obviously the listeners to this podcast are extremely health uh, conscious individuals, but that concept is really starting to permeate the, the, the general population. Um, in particular, if you look in beverage and so forth, there's an increasing appetite for health and wellness products. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look, everything that's growing, double digit growth is everything related in, in, from a health perspective. The, the number one largest beverage category is also the one that's on the highest level of decline and that's your standard carbonated soft drinks, your soda pops. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, when you think about it, people want something healthy, they're looking for antioxidants, or other things that, that are going to improve their lifestyle. Um, and I think we've been able to migrate to an extent here where they're not mutually exclusive, and that is your option between a healthy product and something that tastes good. Now we're able to blend those together, and which is fascinating. The piece about hydrogen, which is super cool, is 
which is a strength and a weakness. The strength is you can add it to a lot of beverages. I'm able to add anything carbonated as an example. Um, and you, it makes basically no discernible difference in taste. Okay. It's a gas. It sits there from an inert perspective, doesn't react with the liquid or anything. Right. So you're adding a ton of antioxidants, highly effective antioxidants without some funky taste. Right. right. Um, in the beverage world, that could be a detriment because usually when you add an ingredient, people want that instant affirmation of some taste. Right. Right. right? So it can be a double edged sword, but that's the beauty of, you know, to a certain extent, it's agnostic to whatever vehicle you you put it in in terms of a delivery mechanism. Um, why do they want it now? Well, um, those who've researched it and understand some of the research, the you know the big issue here with hydrogen is it neutralizes and scavenges free radicals, right? And it's also shown to be a cell signaling modulator, so it can upregulate, downregulate your cellular tissues. So, as an example, you know, if you're under a lot of stress. Um, you know, to your body, and you've got some inflammation, it, it, it's shown to tell your cells to throttle back the production of inflammation. Um, it can scavenge free radicals. And then those who know some of the chemistry, if, if you know the hydroxyl free radical, which is most damaging, the chemical reaction, this is mother nature in harmony. It reacts with that free radical. And after the chemical reaction takes place, you have H2O. There's zero byproduct. It's beautiful right i mean mother nature's there waiting for it um and it's finally took us to figure out how to go all the way back to primordial life and figure out some of these core elements and how our cells respond to it so that's what's super cool about it i think the other part is you know from a simple analogy um hydrogen's the first element on the periodic table right and so that's because it's the lightest element well, this is molecular hydrogen, which is H2. So you're putting two number ones together by its nature. This is the lightest molecule in the universe. Um, and if you think of, all of us are familiar with helium, which is a very light molecule. That's why we put it in balloons. And your kid's birthday party, you have rubber balloons and the metal mylar balloons. And a few days later, the rubber balloons are sagging on the floor and the mylar balloons are standing up. And the reason is the metal retains the helium. The helium is such a small molecule, it'll penetrate through the rubber. Well, hydrogen's even smaller. What does that mean? It can penetrate your cellular walls and lining. It can navigate the body. It's 88 times lighter than vitamin C. So when you breathe air, you, your brain is its first billing, right? It's the number one organ. It wants oxygen and it's going to get along with it oxides. And these oxides are going to penetrate your blood brain barrier. They're very small molecules, but hydrogen's smaller and it can penetrate that blood brain barrier and get to the brain more readily. And so, you know, we'll get into some of the benefits of hydrogen, but, you know, just from a, a very rudimentary level and you look at it on the surface, that makes it really compelling on how it could add value and be um, a, a unique antioxidant compared to maybe some of the traditional plant-based antioxidants that we normally consume. Right. Well, that's super fascinating, man. I, I actually did not know that. And then an analogy, honestly, took it to the next level. I was like, holy cow, man, that's, that's some really cool things that, that it has going on. So, you know, going through the cells and, you know, the brain barrier, I mean, shoot, that's, that's really awesome. I had no idea about that. So, um, and you, so you were talking about the benefits and the health advantages. So can you kind of go into that? Um, have you seen anything from research showing that in, in the human, um, model, like showing that, you know, hydrogen helps with certain things? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the research started in the early 2000s out of Japan, um, and people, the, the demo studies have, have grown. There's over a thousand published articles, um, hundreds of, of, uh, published medical studies, a good portion of those, a significant portion, are human studies. Um, you know, and some of the, the 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 ones that probably resonate in my mind, um, there's been some studies on uh, reduced lactic acid buildup, and you know, from folks that are working out. So, mm -hmm. prolonged endurance is what you see. Um, increased recovery or reduced recovery time after post workout. Um, and, you know, a lot of cognitive function, and I, I do believe that does relate back to the blood brain, blood brain barrier piece, right. um, you know, how it can get into the brain, where the majority of your oxidative stress is actually in the brain. 
Um, and so when you start thinking about migraines and headaches and stress and that sort of thing, um, you know, it's a great complement to your daily routine to, to clear your head, so to speak, respiratory function and circulatory function. Um, that's, those are probably the, the three that I see and I'm a pretty healthy guy. You know, I run around, I can say I'm a family man. So, um, I'm a, I'm a two, mi two mile a day runner, right? So I'm, I'm working my cardio, getting a sweat in. I want to make sure I can run around with my kids. And, um, so I, I don't have that extreme burn in my workout. Um, but what I see for me is cognitive function. You know, I'll have, an, I'll have a drink in the afternoon at, rather than a cup of coffee and, you know, it clears my head. Um, and I've, in and, and respiratory and circulatory. And with that, you just feel so much better. I've had a lot of folks reach out to me that have purchased our product on Amazon or elsewhere. Um, you know, respiratory seems to be a really big one. Or just in general, the whole attitude piece, people seem to feel, you know, to a certain extent, it almost flushes out a negative energy, if you like, um, you know, and, and they just feel more refreshed. It's not an energy drink. It's, right. it's natural, right? I mean, these energy drinks are so synthetic there, you know, I've talked to somebody who's a pretty interesting ex Olympic gymnast and he refers to energy drinks as these borrow from tomorrow beverages, which just deplete your reserves of energy, give you a jolt and then you crash. You don't get that with hydrogen. You know, it's, it's organic and it's natural. So some of those things are subtle. And if you've got people who are really in tune with their physiology, they will feel a difference. There's no doubt. Mm. Oh, wow, that's sweet, man. I, I actually need, I need to get some from you because I was looking at it and I was like, man, I just need to get a whole case <laughs> and try it out, man, and do it experiments because I'm all about experimenting on myself. I've done like almost everything you could think of. So uh, I got to try that and see because I, you know, sometimes I'll have, I'll have coffee like, between, you know, before two o'clock because, you know, they talk about the half-life of coffee and like usually, you know, coffee like burns off after like eight hours or something like that. Right. So uh, I don't want that to go into my sleep. So um, I try and drink coffee before two if I'm going to, you know, have it. But I need to try that, man, and see if that helps me out. Um, well, you know, um, I know where you can get it. So I might be able to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, so Rick, other than Hyvita, what are, what are some other options and methods for using molecular hydrogen today um, as far as like ingesting and methods and that kind of thing? Yeah, so this is really an emerging, growing, you know, science and category, right? So you've seen the scientific papers, and those those tend to precede commercial implementation. So you've got all these papers that support the benefits, and now you have a number of players like Hyvita entering this space. And so the question is, what delivery mechanisms make sense? And there's a few out there, right? So they, we're a ready-to-drink beverage. We're sold in retail. We're on Amazon, and we're we're working those circuits. And there's in the U.S. probably four or five other brands doing it. Um, you know, as an example, you know, I give my hats off to a couple of prominent individuals. Dr. Maricola has a unique product mm. that he's, he's come out with, a specialty type thing. It's not a water per se, it's a beverage. Um, Dr. Pericone and a few other folks, and you know, which is great. I have, I have, I'm glad to announce direct competitors just because my view is more people embrace hydrogen, that tide rises, and more people that, that just develops more momentum and awareness. So there's the ready to drink beverage side. There are dietary supplement type products that, um, you know, you, you buy these, um, you know, you can buy them online or what have you, uh, and they dissolve in just still water. You can crack open a water bottle or even tap water. They'll dissolve similar to something like an Elka seltzer. And what they do is they're designed to liberate the H2 from the oxygen in the water molecule um, and leaving obviously the H2 bubbles in there and then you consume it. And then um, there are companies now that have machines that also are designed through an electrical process to liberate the, the hydrogen from the oxygen in the, in the water molecule. And then you can have an exercise club or you can buy them to put them on your countertop and you can, you know, pour yourself essentially out of the machine, you know, a glass of hydrogen infused water. And, and then the last is there are some folks working on more of a respiratory where it's hydrogen gas and you breathe that in and some it's a mixture of hydrogen gas with with air um, to get your for lack of a term a dose of of hydrogen in your body okay gotcha now hyvita is the first hydrogen infused sparkling water correct. correct so is there is there an advantage for it to be sparkling water at Absolutely. all or is it just it's okay go ahead <laughs> <laughs> 
Because I made it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. <laughs> no, I love sparkling water. It, it, to be honest with you, um, I looked at it in a couple of ways. So we're certainly not the first to market with it. Um, we were going to we were going to go to market with a, with a non-sparkling. So the hydrogen molecule, although it's a gas, when you add it to still water, the molecule is so small, the bubbles are so small, you can't discern it on your palate. Yeah. Um, but because there were a number of players in the still water space, um, what I thought is why not add it to sparkling? It's a complement, and it can be a disruptor. And I also looked at sparkling. It, it, sparkling as a beverage category, if you put the kind of commercial hat on, it's growing 20 plus percent per year, which is phenomenal growth. And a lot of that growth is, can I touched on earlier, is at the expense of the declining soda pops. People still want the fun, fizzy experience, but they don't want the baggage and the fructose corn syrups and things that come along with, or even the diet sodas with all the synthetics. Um, and so I looked at it and said, well, we can, let's make it fun. And the other part is kind of the entrepreneurial, the commercial side. So you've got the the biology and the chemistry and the science, how do you build a brand, right? So that's the other part that's going to come into it. And, and at some point, if you really want to appeal to the masses, it's got to taste great and it's got to be fun. Um, and it's got to have a great brand story and engage with customers. So those things are paramount as well. Otherwise, it's more of a dietary supplement. And you're just consuming it just for the health function. And what I want to do is accomplish both. And I think we've, we've, Start off to do just that where there are some people that they're still skeptical about hydrogen but they said geez it tastes so good let's do it i'll drink it and if the benefits are there all the better so that was really the way we 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 positioned the product um and there's fertile ground for that and then i looked at it as i said earlier it's agnostic to the medium here's a way when you're going to come into a market i'm a technology guy if i can go and enter a a package design or a concept that's different than everybody else that's an opportunity to create intellectual property to protect my space. So we've got two patent applications that allow us to do that. So now this is a really from a from pure, almost an investor perspective. You're in a growing category. You're totally on market trend. We have zero calories, zero sweeteners. We have three SKUs. We have a pure, which is non-flavored. We have um, two that are flavored and we're using organic, certified organic flavors and they're extracts. So it's, it's really more like almost like, you know, if you just squeeze our lemon lime is almost more like if you just squeeze a little bit of a few drops of lemon and a few drops of lime in water in sparkling water, it's a subtle, right? It's not a juice. So there's no sugars, there's no calories, there's no sweeteners, there's no caffeine. It's just totally pure, um, you know, from that perspective. So here we are with these products. And the way I looked at it is sparkling water is taking over. And of course, we had to go out and we, we trademarked Sparkling 2.0 because we looked at it and said, we're going to give you all that guilt-free enjoyment and pleasure of a zero-calorie sparkling beverage, but now we're going to give you the same amount of antioxidants as an orange, but without the sugars, calories, sweeteners, and caffeines. So, you know, there's no trade-off, right? So you get the functional health benefit without any of the guilt. So, you know, that's really where I want to take it as be a disruptor, not a fast follower or a Me Too type product. Cool, man. No, that's, that's awesome. Cause I know a lot of people, they freaking hate things that don't taste good, you know, and now people hate things that aren't healthy. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, people still drink their sodas and crap and all that. But, you know, the reality is, is that people actually want to be healthier. People are, you know, even though there's, you know, you and I were in this bubble of health, right. There's mm -hmm. still people outside of it that have no idea about this stuff. But I think as we grow, we know that sick care is not the way to go. And that's what we've been growing in for the longest time. And now people are realizing, hey, there's a better way to do things. So yeah, I really appreciate all that, man. That's, re that's really cool. So there's, here's another thing, Rick. So I know that um, many people think that you can actually consume too much hydrogen and it might be unhealthy, but we know that's totally wrong. Uh, can you kind of speak to this a little bit? Yeah, um, there have been a number of studies where, um, particularly with, obviously with animal models where they've um, gone way above what they have seen zero side effects. So was it, there's hundreds of published um, studies in every single one 
the it's in all of these, and that is there are still no known side effects. Um, you, there doesn't seem to be any way you can can consume too much. What they've then done is even if you ingest it in a liquid form, you do you can your exhale when you exhale the level. So to a certain extent, even if your a better term is not able to metabolize or ingest it fully, you give it off. You put it out rather than it giving any potential side effect. Gotcha. Cool. Now, uh, one of the biggest reasons people are actually like turning to molecular hydrogen is the ability to gather free radicals, you know, like we, t- we were talking about earlier, and decrease cancer forming molecules, which in turn is really what a free radical is. Many people think that antioxidants, you know, coming from fruits and smoothies can kill off free radicals, you know, just like that. Or they're thinking, oh, I'm just going to have my wine at night. Hey, that's going to be, you know, going to kill all these free radicals because I have my antioxidants, right? Why may this statement be incorrect? Why, why do you see that antioxidants may not actually be enough and hydrogen is actually probably a better option? Um, I mean, that's a good question. Antioxidants are a key. Um, in the preventative stuff. So you, you know, your environment and, and where you live, what you eat, how you sleep, these sorts of things, you know, just trying to come back and, and, and fix a symptom, so to speak, is 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 really not the issue, not the right way of doing it. So you say these free radicals are on your body because it's a symptom of the fact that you have an unhealthy lifestyle. Um, that's not necessarily going to do it. I think the other thing is, if you really follow the chemistry of some of your plant-based antioxidants, um, you know what happens is they scavenge and they neutralize the free radical, but often there's still residual, um, uh, you know, from that molecule that um, vitamin C molecule, there's material left, right? You've changed that structure of that antioxidant, and sometimes that's not stable. And that can still go around the body and maybe wreak havoc because it's not balanced and it's looking for an electron or two and it's going to borrow one from your healthy tissue. Um, you know, so those are pretty interesting things to contemplate. And I think that, you know, the other part about the hydrogen is a cell signaling modulator. That, that is kind of a preventative medicine piece. So it's telling your cells to stop producing free radicals. Um, you know, so from that perspective, it is, it has a, a little bit of a superiority over, I think, some of the plant-based um, antioxidants from, from all the research that I could gather. Right. Yeah. And I actually remember reading about that on, on your website, because I know you guys, you're different than other people, because a lot of times, you know, you go on, you know, any of these companies' websites and, you know, they talk about their product and like the benefits, but you guys like really kind of go into it and explain the science behind it. And I, I really liked that a lot when I was reading about it. So that was super cool to, to look at how hydrogen can be a little bit better than your typical antioxidant. So that, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, now, so Hyvita, like we said earlier, has zero sugar, zero sweeteners, certified organic, non-GMO flavors. How important was it for you guys to leave out the unnecessary garbage and nasty ingredients? Oh, I got to tell you that, that I've had so many people say, oh, you should add caffeine to it. Now, look, I enjoy <laughs> caffeine. I drink coffee, right? Um, you know, but he, here's here's how I looked at it. Hydrogen. There's a couple of things that I, I really contemplated. One, just the pure simplicity of hydrogen when you think about it um, and how it works. And I touched on that earlier on this discussion. You know, from that standpoint, you got to let it stand out. You've got to let that shine. Let people experience it. Don't mask it with something else. Um, it's so disruptive on its own. And I think when you, with the other part, again, you have to look at this from an entrepreneurial perspective. You know, at the end of the day, I'm raising capital. I've got investors. Um, you know, they want to return. They're not investing in me totally for philanthropic reasons, right? And and so, you know, the 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 thing you have to contemplate here is how does it disrupt? It by itself is a huge disruptive. 
the world is saturated with beverages that are blended cocktails of things where you look at the ingredients list and it's nuts. You can't even pronounce it. And I'm passionate about just what I call a reduction to some of the simplest things because I think often they're the most effective. And my partners, all three of those folks are medical technology folks, or other co-founders, and they all have PhDs, right? So there's that, that technical element about us that we love. And, and if you know anybody who has like an engineering degree or a PhD, they generally say the simplest design is usually the most elegant. Um, and you know, and it's so true in so many elements of our life. And I think this here resonates with it. And, you know, like if I go look at my pure product and these ingredients, it's carbonated water, magnesium, and hydrogen. So I added the magnesium and we can touch on that for a reason, um, later, obviously it's an, it's a critical mineral and that's why I wanted to add it. Um, and that's the only other additive. And I added that because two reasons. It's, it's, it's critical for your health. Um, it helps to, to further differentiate. The same target audience that values hydrogen would value magnesium. And in many cases, because of the magnesium, it gets people to embrace the product. So it's a bit of a bridge to bring it. Mm-hmm. The other thing that it did, which is fascinating, is um, now we're we'll getting to t- discuss the pH of beverages, right? So I'm a beverage guy. I'm learning all this. I'm, hey, look, I'm farting around in my kitchen trying to figure this out. <laughs> And I want to, as I mentioned earlier, I want to ta- taste different. I want my, my customers to experience a little bit of a taste difference. Well, what magnesium does outside of its health benefits is, you know, it's an amazing electrolyte. But as, as a mineral, it takes the, the acidic pH that you would traditionally get from your standard sparkling water, which is about a three and a half. That's pretty acidic. Mm-hmm. And it takes it to about a four and a half. Mm-hmm. So that means the erosivity on your teeth is 10 times less because it's a logarithmic function, right? So mm-hmm. it's 10 times less erosive on your teeth. It also means that when you drink it, it's far more smooth. You don't get the esophagus burn. So now you've got this nice mineral and you've got you know a great smooth taste experience. And then when you add these subtle flavor essence, the flavors begin to shine. The acidity normally, and I think in other brands, begins to overpower the flavoring. So what do you do? You add more flavor. Um, so in this case, I throttled back the acidity to make it a little more neutral. I mean, it's still an acidic product, but it's not nearly as acidic as, as you know, the, I would say traditional sparkling water. So in harmony, they were great. And obviously magnesium is fantastic from a nervous function and anxiety. So when you think about the benefits of hydrogen in concert, the two work uh, beautifully, you know, in your body. So it's just about as simple as you get. Um, and so you know, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to have, I, what I believe we've got is the most pure, simple ingredients, the best tasting sparkling water, and the most functional, still without any calories or sweeteners or so forth. So, you know, that's really what we strive for. Um, you know, at some point there'll be brand extensions. We'll see. Um, you know, if anybody's a beer drinker, I've, I've added it to beer. It's... <laughs> Why not? You know, yeah, um, there's yeah. been some studies that say it helps uh, reduce hangover. So, you know, right. alcohol is a toxin. So why not counteract that in one shot? So who knows? Right. You know, yeah, actually, but, that's um, what, that was actually going to be one of my questions there, Rick. You're getting ahead of yourself. <laughs> 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 that's super cool, man. No, that's amazing. Because, you know, you don't hear it too often from from big companies that, you know, it's like, I, and I love, as you said, like the simplest design is the most elegant. Like that is just so profound, man, because people don't get that. I mean, people today, they think you need the, like this, like crazy design. You need like this, these crazy plans, you know, this co- these cocktails when it's like, no, just keep it simple because people are just inundated with all this information, all these nutritional things. And it's like, no, man, people just want simple, simple, simple. So they can actually understand. And I love that you guys put the magnesium in because it's true that, oh, it's magnesium in it, magnesium in it. It's like, damn, this, I, I'm totally going to have this. I need more magnesium in my diet. You know, my doctor told me, you know, it's, it's funny, man. That's, that's, that's super cool. And I, I, I can totally see people doing that. Um, so we talked a little bit earlier, Rick, on um, people feeling better, mostly because they had, you know, focus and they're, you know, towards the middle end of the day, they were drinking it and they're feeling better. Um, are there any other reports of people having any kind of uh you know differences in quality of life drinking high or anything with 
uh, molecular hydrogen that you know of? Um, you know, we, I, I listen to people. There's a lot of uh, feedback that people have. Um, you know, I mentioned the inflammation side. You know, these are, these are claims that other people have, have made. And, you know, it, this is not a drug, right? And, and right. to make inflammation claims on a product like this, you know, the FDA wants to have clinical studies to validate. But there have been a handful of studies there, memory and cognitive functions. There's a, a study that's ongoing related to Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I've personally had a few people contact me. I mentioned respiratory function, but, you know, I've had a few people who truly have some respiratory issues. Some, have, particularly one had to partially collapsed lung. And, you know, the poor fellow um, it was related to a reaction to a medication, in fact. And you know, he's in his 40s and he's gained like 50 pounds because he can't work out anymore. He just can't take enough oxygen in. And now he's drinking it. And he said, you know, for an hour post-consumption, his respiratory function has improved so much he can actually get into a workout and burn some calories. So he's wow. just super excited that, look, man, I can restore a little bit of my life and I can at least get into the workout piece, which now puts him on, tips the scale back into the preventative side for a period of time. And, you know, I'm, I'm just so elated that, you know, people are coming back with these kinds of stories and, you know, it, it's just so much more rewarding when you believe in the product and, um, you know, it's helping people, right. you know what I mean? So there's just nothing more rewarding in, in doing something like this you love, you're enjoying. And just the, the feedback we're getting is just overwhelming. Well, I think the coolest thing too, Rick, is that it's unique, right? And yeah. it's, it's cool that people are getting better and you're also, you have a product that's like, oh, wow, this is something that no one's really had before. Although, you know, we've had it for, you know, a couple of years here now, you know, inside of drinks, but still it's kind of like, wow, that's awesome. We're like the top dogs. I think that's, that's really cool. Now, who are you finding are like your biggest consumers of Hyveta, like your demographics? if you were to break it down. Yeah, you know, and I guess it's self-fulfilling. So we started out who would be the demographics that would embrace it first. So your avatar, so, personal avatar. Absolutely, right? Yeah. So who, who is that avatar? And um, because it was a sparkling who drinks sparkling waters, you know, that's kind of the, the process we went through. And um, if you look at our labels and so forth, you'll see they're a bit more feminine. Um, and, you know, we did that for a lot of reasons, but we, we've really targeted women from about the age of 20 to 50 predominantly a lot of sparkling water drinkers, um, your energy drink type folks are men, you know, that sort of thing. And that's, and I'll stereotype a little bit. They're at your convenience stores and you see a lot of your beef jerky and your, <laughs> and your energy drink. So we're steering clear of that. And now you think of your whole foods and your sprouts and some of your higher end grocery stores or your independent uh, health and wellness and organic shops. Um, you know, those are about 75% women that walk through there. They make 80% of the buying decisions for the house. And so, look, I'm in my 40s and my wife will pick up something healthy and I'll drink it, you know, or consume it, you know, and, and, and if I like it, she'll continue to buy it. So, you know, that's kind of that journey we went on. But at the same token, it's not so overly feminine to the extent that men wouldn't want to consume it. And um, so when you look at the Amazon data, it's probably 60 percent women, 40 percent men. Um, and we're actually seeing a lot of men in their 40s and 50s on Amazon. I think what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of men who are starting to now realize that they're not in their 20s and a bad meal, they really feel it, right? right. So they're starting to now say, hey, look, I want to I wanna sustain that, that vibrato I had when I was in my early 30s where I had that ongoing energy and I, I wasn't dogged down. And so they're really more cognizant of their lifestyle, their eating habits, their sleeping habits, and they're moving over to beverages like this because they do prove a benefit. Um, you know, and they have higher disposable income. And this is a little bit of a higher end product, but not too much extreme from a price perspective. So that's where we're carving it out. And those folks tend to influence other folks and, you know, help build the story and so forth and, and, and you know, share their stories. And that'll get more folks to, to jump on board, I believe. Cool. Well, I will say, Rick, you're you're a hundred percent right when it comes to women making the decisions for the family. Because as a healthcare provider myself, we see about eighty to ninety percent women first, and then they drag their husbands in. <laughs> says, "You need this. You need to fix yourself." You know, so uh, that's a that's a fact. That is a fact. It, you know, so it's, it's so true. You know, and and my wife, you know, with having kids and. 
how they're poked and prodded and it's just part of the routine. And, you know, I, I'm hate to say it. I'm, I'm quite a few years, well, a few years away, but my wife's count, having me count down my first colonoscopy and I'm already. <laughs> <looking at> people... <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Well, so, um, what, what's kind of like the future for high Vita? What do you hope to achieve with molecular hydrogen for the public? And, uh, where, where do you see yourself going with it? Um, you know, I, I really think the sky's the limit with this. Um, mm. the, the, the feedback we're getting just in the hydrogen in general, people are embracing it. Um, and then the other part is it's not that people are trying it and walking away. Uh, you're seeing it stick. You're seeing a lot of people become habitual with it, which is, is a, is a key part to retain those types of folks. So when they make the conversion, and I, I truly believe you're going to see it become more and more available. And as, as it becomes more available, people continue to buy it. You know, obviously, these types of early stage brands like ourselves, sales volumes go up, right? Economy, sale, economy of scales type equations come in, cost structures come down, distribution agreements and so forth. And yeah, you'll start to see it next to, you know, some of the energy drinks at convenience stores, you know, and you can just pick it up anywhere. Um, that's my honest opinion. I think you're going to start to see more and more movements into schools. And I think, you know, um, products like this, you know, if, if everybody experienced what I experienced when I drink our product, um, you know, it wouldn't shock me to see particularly, you know, more progressive companies start to, you know, offer it uh, to their employees rather than a cup of coffee or rather than a soda drink because cognitive function, memory, you know, don't you want that out of your employee when they're stressed staring at a computer? You want their synapses firing. Everybody says your best meetings are in the morning. Well, that's because you're awake and you're fired up and then you're stressed out in the afternoon. Can you prolong that peak performance from a mental perspective? You know, and, and then even further from that standpoint, you know, could, could we start to see, you know, uh, in, insurance companies and these kinds of things start to promote that? You know, you can see corporate mm -hmm. programs, you know, I work for big companies and I see it, right? If you have a health and wellness program, your premiums go down. So when do these, this is where this could go. Um, and you're going to start to see hydrogen being fused in other beverages and products, you know, so it's, I really think the sky's the limit with this. Now, you know, as somebody in the healthcare field, you, you'd probably appreciate certain hospitals are adding this to saline solutions because mm -hmm. it's really helped, you know, surgery is extremely traumatic, right? And so there's a lot of inflammation that's created um, and so they're adding it to saline solutions to help patients during the surgery and post-op. And, um, you know, one of my first investors, he heard about hydrogen before me, before I told him about it, because his father had a knee replacement surgery. And the, the post-op, he would go back and get checked, and they were doing knee flushes with hydrogen-infused water to help the inflammation mm -hmm. reduce. So you start to really, I mean, there's some real science behind here. This isn't hocus-pocus. So that's what's so exciting when you when you see that level of foundation that's being built and and it being legitimized with professionals recommending it and promoting it and trying to figure out how to adopt it it's just going to cascade into a broader audience gotcha cool yeah that's that's really awesome i have heard about some of the medical stuff going on especially with inflammation so i think that's super cool now I know that there's there's some questions that come up uh, regarding hydrogen, you know, it being a gas, and when you open it, right, the gases, you know, they escape. So I think that there's like kind of a window when you open it, mm -hmm. especially like you know with high vita that you actually have to drink it. What kind of window do you should you drink high vita in? Yeah, that's a great question. So you're, you're spot on. Um, well, the best analogy, those of us who are familiar with anything carbonated, um, you know it will go flat, right? If you open a can or whatever, and let's say the next day you look at it, it's totally flat. Um, mm -hmm. An hour from opening it, maybe it's lost some of the carbonation. Hydrogen's a gas, the same physics apply. So, you know, from what we've seen and I've measured in, you know, for lack of a better term, you, probably the best definition would be the half-life. How much hydrogen, at what time domain, it, have you lost half of the hydrogen? Um, and it's somewhere between 45 uh, and 60 minutes is what I'm seeing. So, you know, you open a 12 ounce can, you know, if you really are into the hydrogen, you know, it's not something that you should probably look at sipping. Like a bottle of water, you see people crack it open, they'll sip, set it down, close the lid, and they may be nursing it for a few hours. <laughs> if you really want, if you really want the functional benefit, 
Yeah, you should look at consuming it within 30 minutes, but a 12 ounce can in 30 minutes shouldn't be too much for any of us to consume. Right, right. cool, awesome. Now let's go back to <laughs> when you were talking about uh, putting hydrogen into your, your, your beer or your, al your alcohol. Oh. <laughs> um, Cause I was, I was actually, before you brought that up, I was actually just reading your recent blog post and it was about adding uh, Hyvita kind of like to like cocktails for like hydration. Um, yeah. so can you kind of like talk about that a little bit and what, what are your thoughts on this? Well, first I think it's fabulous. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> look, you know, I mean, we're all healthy and we, but look, I, I you know, uh, I enjoy a good cocktail here and there. And um, uh, a lot of folks that dry it, uh, uh, buy it, you know, have, have said, ah, I like it with this. I like that and recipes and things. And, you know, the reality is, where are wasted calories in our diet? You know, and here the holiday seasons are coming in and we're, we're about to go on a, a glutton of, you know, yeah. 3,500 calories a day on average through New Year's. Um, but if you look at it, there's a lot of wasted calories and, you know, that are useless. And, and I think cocktails and beverages in general is one of them. Um, and when you look at mixed drinks, even, you know, like a gin and tonic, you know, you, you look at, there's a lot of sugars and there's some calories in tonic mm -hmm. and you switch that, replace that tonic with a raspberry high Vita and it, it actually tastes lighter, smoother. And then of course you're getting the antioxidants, which can help counteract, um, you know, some of the oxidative stress that's going to be caused by the alcohol. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's, why not look at that as, you know, uh, kind of an opportunity for people to embrace the product. Gotcha. Now we kind of touched on this uh, a few a few minutes ago or so, but if you were to paint a uh, like a picture and a vision for the world and for health, what is what is Hyvita's like? You know, like overarching vision for everything. Like, where do you see yourself? Like, kind of like taking this. Um, who do you want to consume your product? And I mean. You know, I know that you want everyone to be healthy, but is there almost, is there a kind of like a vision in the, in the company that you want to take everyone? Well, I, I, first I, you know, it, it is a, it's a very interesting from a hydrogen perspective. It, it's, everybody can benefit, um, you know, literally from little children all the way up to, you know, seniors at the end of their life. Um, and for various reasons, they can, they can reap benefits uh, from hydrogen. Um, you know, for us in general, you know, in, in my view, I think we're becoming increasingly holistic. I think, you know, modern science through the 40s and 50s and all the synthetics and things, and we thought we knew better by, you know, developing all these synthetics, right? And I'm at an age where I remember my mom saying, no more butter, we're, we're going to buy margarine, you know? <laughs> oh, it's crazy. <laughs> You know, I mean, I remember that. Oh, look, look at, we can put more on there. It's, you know, it's healthy. <laughs> you know, now we know it's like, this is so synthetic. Your body can't metabolize it. And it's being, you know, and, and you need butter. And, um, and so, and it's simpler, right? It's organic. Our bodies have been made to process it. So that's what I'm fascinated about is, is simpler is better. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you're going to find that no matter what we do from a standpoint of growing our business, we're, we're going to look and, and, and we're in uh, commitment to find the most simplest ingredients that offer functional health benefits. I think the other side of this is it's, it's a preventative solution. Um, and, you know, you see the vision of the business, and as I touched on earlier and through the bio, you know, I have a lot of medical imaging experience and my, you know, the four, the four of us co-founders have collectively about 100 years in medical imaging tons of patents and you know the challenge we had is we applied our technical prowess and, and entrepreneurial skill set to develop disruptive medical imaging systems to more accurately diagnose uh, like breast cancer and things like that um, earlier right the onset of these things and, and so you can do the interventional procedure more quickly a um, lot of barriers to entry a lot of challenges what I like here is this is upstream from that this is helping yeah. you even even get to that stage, right? So that's what's really exciting is get on the preventative side, um, you know. And so I think as people get uh, more aware of these things and data comes out, I think just overall culturally we're gonna we're going to embrace the.
the preventative and more of the holistic side of our um, solutions, um, you know, than the preventative or the, 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 the alternative, which is, you know, how do you, how do you recover from something? Um, whether it be surgery or other types of invasive procedures that are very costly. And, you know, at that point, somebody's already taken their body to a level of pain and anguish and decay that it's expensive for everybody. Right. Gotcha. Now, I know that you guys have been, you know, marketing pretty hard in the past year and a half or two or so, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what, what are your plans for 2019? Because, you know, we're coming up on 2019 pretty sh- soon here. Um, what, do, what do you plan to accomplish in 2019? And what's your big push to get hy out to customers and to really get that maximum exposure? Uh, yeah, it's a fantastic question. So, um, you know, kind of looking at our goals for next year. So from a beverage perspective, the way beverage works is it is seasonal. So you can imagine more beverages consumed in the summer months. Um, as a result, uh, you know, your grocery stores, your retailers, the bigger ones, they tend to make their decision on what they're going to put on the shelf at about right now. So that, that process starts from November through to January, and then they make their decision. You get on the shelf April, May timeframe. Um, and so we're right in the middle of all that submission. We've received some very favorable feedback from a number of, of uh, retailers. Um, you know, we're in about 400 stores now. We launched in August and we're already in 400 and we already have commitments to being in over another thousand. So we'll see where it ends up. We're going to continue to push, but the other part is are they have to be the right stores where that target consumer is. Right. So for us, getting more store placements, getting on the shelf, you know, ideally get to maybe 2000 stores. We, we launched out East in the Midwest um, for a lot of strategic, Strategic reasons, we're going to continue to concentrate out east, uh, I think, through calendar 19 and make a push west in calendar 20. Um, you know, and the other is, what is the story? What is the narrative? You have, when people see your can on the shelf, you have about three seconds to get them to really pick it up and want to embrace it. So is the narrative right? Do people understand the hydrogen? Well, that's obviously, you know, the education piece. Somebody like yourself is so instrumental to help, um, you know, share stories like this and educate, you know, you know, your listeners, um, on solutions like this. And, you know, so that's really the core of, you know, let's get on these stores, let's get the product moving off the shelf, um, and, and, you know, create more awareness for first hydrogen as a concept. And then secondly, hy as a, as a product and a solution. Cool. Awesome. Now, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, man, because, you know, I recently just dis- discovered you guys and, I was looking at it and I was like, dang, man, these guys are going to, I think this is going to be big. And oh, thanks for uh, jinxing I'm, me, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you guys. Like I'm like, I want oh yeah, no, I appreciate out, it. Man. Yeah. Because I think this is so cool, man. And I love it because it's so simple, you know, and it works. So that's exactly. what I love so much about it. Cause I'm a simpleton too. I mean, I talk, I tell my patients, I tell all my followers, I tell my listeners, like, You don't need to add stuff. You need to take stuff away because the reality is we always put all these things on top of our foods and it's like, no, you're destroying everything that's good in it. (laughs) That's healthy. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, totally. (laughs) Totally. Yeah. I, I, I love that, man. Um, yeah, and so, I, when I go to a restaurant, I ask for my dressing on the side because they'll just <laughs> mean it on there, you know? Yes. yes. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually funny. The other day, I, oh, this poor lady, she came out um, and she said, hey, what can I, can I get for you, right? And, um, you know, I ordered a side salad or whatnot. And uh, I actually asked her, I was like, hey, uh, what kind of olive oil do you guys have? She goes, what do you mean? And I go, is it cold-pressed, extra virgin, organic? And she goes, I don't know. And I'm like, well, can you go check? Go check. And she comes down. She's like, it is extra virgin cold press, but I don't know if it's organic. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. She's like, do you want it on it? I'm like, no, I want it on the side. And she's like, okay, do you want balsam- balsamic vinegar? I'm like, no, I just want the olive oil. <laughs> and she like couldn't wrap her mind around it, but that's a whole nother story. Anyway, <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. So, okay, Rick, we, to- we talked like briefly on your competitors, right? Um, Mm -hmm. but I want to know, so who are, uh, your competitors now? And then why do you think that Hyvita will probably, um, kind of like stay atop of the mountain 
per se? Like, why do you, why do you guys think you may be the king, king of the court uh-huh. between these? Yeah. Um, if you can speak to that. Well, it's a, you know, I mean, we're so early. It's, it, you know, you, you, you I, I guess maybe what I should say is what makes you guys different. Yeah. That's, I think that's fair because, um, you know, my mom always told me to be humble. So, right. Uh, yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, you know, what makes us different? First of all, there's a lot of good products out there. Um, but, you know, your question, you know, we can get into the, the nuances of the product. We touched on that. So you can kind of see how we're different. When you really look and say who are your direct competitors, you know, the reality of it is we're sparkling water. Um, it's li- unlikely that somebody's going to walk into the store and say, I'll take anything hydrogen. You know, um, I can't wait till that happens, you know, but we're not at that level. <laughs> give me my hydrogen, man. Yeah. What do you, what's your, hi- give me your, hi- where's the hydrogen aisle? <laughs> yeah. um, we're not there yet. But, you know, so when you, when you think about that avatar and what they're going through, um, you know, particularly on the retail shelf, where are we positioned on the shelf? And we're a sparkling water, right? We're a functional sparkling water. And we're positioned with some of your higher end um, beverages, cold press juices and these sorts of things fall into kind of the higher end, some of the cold press coffees and these functional beverages and so forth, some of your alkalines and so forth. That's where we're being positioned. Um, you know, from a standpoint of looking at the other ready to drink hydrogen products, um, they're more complementary in my view, uh, just because A, they're not sparkling, B, they at this early stage, collectively, if you really look at it, to be honest, we don't have that much market share, right? Um, if we did, then it would be, everybody would be aware of it. So those folks make converting anybody to hydrogen is a good thing. Um, but I would say some of the more established sparkling waters in functional waters is probably what I would say the, direct, the comp- competitor that we're trying to take their share. Gotcha. Cool. Now you, you touched a little bit on where you guys are located in the country. Um, but which, and I know you guys have been on Amazon for a little while now, right? Mm-hmm. Or, yep. um, which stores, like where are some of the bigger stores that people can probably find Hyvita in right now? And then maybe even, you know, upcoming here in the next year. Yeah. So, uh, we did a, a big, well, for us, a big launch, a focus in Metro New York. We're in about 100 or so stores in Metro New York. Um, a lot of smaller independent store chains. Um, and, and then through Eastern PA and then the Midwest. I'm, I'm based in Michigan. It's where our headquarters are, um, are located. And we're in a lot of the kind of the independent health and wellness type stores. Um, and so from a, from a chain perspective, you know, those are in, in Minneapolis. Um, there's Kowalski's Market. It's about 12 stores there. It's a very nice chain. Um, and then we just had a press release that came out a couple of weeks ago, and we got into one of the more of a larger store chain, and it's, it's called Giant of Carlisle Martins, which is Pennsylvania. So there's about 140 stores that were in there. Um, cool. And then, you know, we've received verbal uh, commitments from a couple of pretty big chains. Um, but we won't be on the shelf until maybe February going into, um, May. And so I have to hold back on that. I'm, I've, I've learned uh, through hard knocks if I'm too premature, you know, you just never know until you get that order. But, um, we are excited about all of that. You know, we're, um, we're seeing a lot of interest to, to take the product. And even internationally, we've had some inquiries from folks to, who really want to bring the product abroad. Um, and we'll have to figure out when the right time to do that is as well. Cool. Yeah. I, I'd love to see it out here in the West, man. I'm in Wyoming right now and shoot, it's, it's been pretty cold here, but man, <laughs> I'd love to see it. You guys, do you have plans bringing it out towards the West anytime soon? Yeah, we, we, we were in deep consideration, um, to do that going into calendar 19. Um, and then, you know, it's a beverage, um, as much as I love hydrogen i had to be you know only the paranoid survive um and i've you know we've as technologists we're smart enough to realize we need a beverage guru on our board of directors which which we've added and um he's been a great compliment but 
you know, the, the brands that have succeeded, you know, and if you folks follow the, well, I said a merger and acquisition, those brands have really taken off and have sold for hundreds of millions. Um, you know, they spent the first year or two concentrating geographically, getting the narrative right, figuring out how to sell it, how to position it, tweaking the label, um, you know, and once they, that starts, that story gets really refined, then you can cascade it out. So that's really, I think 2020 is the year that, you know, we'll be looking for parts of California because obviously this product is right in line with, you know, the health, health and wellness folks out West. Um, right. And, um, you know, it's just a matter of time. And, you know, I think we all buy from Amazon. So you know, <laughs> yeah. I think they ship out to Wyoming. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think they come here. Yeah, maybe not as fast as other states, you know, because we're in the middle of nowhere, basically. But it still gets here. <laughs> hey, it's God's country out there, you know. <laughs> it is God's country. I will say that. Now, Rick, as we kind of come up on the end of the show, I usually ask three questions, right? Before before we get into those three questions, did you want to talk anything else on High Vita, or did you want to talk about? Um, anything regarding uh, molecular hydrogen or anything like that that maybe I didn't cover? Is there anything else you want to touch on? No, I think you're you're well versed. We we touched on a lot of a lot of the core elements about it. So no, I'm I'm good. Okay, cool, man. So yeah, so first question is, if the world was ending today and you could eat anything for your last meal, what would it be? Yeah. Oh, um, Boy, the first thing that comes to my mind is I, I got to tell you, um, I love seafood. I'd have a seafood nice. feast. I I think it would be lobster, king crab legs, scallops, tuna, some sushi. Complement it probably with some grilled asparagus and some Brussels sprouts. Um, wow. Wash it down with a high vita and maybe a chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's beautiful well, what's what's your favorite fish rick like do you is tuna your favorite what, what is your favorite fish oh god i love i love pan seared tuna that's how we we order big thick pans with tuna and then we'll you know put a little olive oil on there and a little bit of soy fresh sea salt and just turn the grill up and sear it a minute on each side so it's raw in the middle it's a beautiful nice. thing um salmon too some really good salmon now i i live in a town that's right in Lake Michigan. And, um, and if, you know, if people don't realize it, you can get some fantastic, um, lake salmon. Um, and really? we'll go out and we'll run a fishing charter. And I'll take my kids out and we'll, you know, at 6.00 AM, we're pulling in 15 to 20 pounds salmon. Um, Holy cow. and there, you know, and that night we'll do a cook and it's just super fresh. There's nothing better than that. Um, that you is know, so can't go wrong with either one of those. Wow. Did not know that. That's really cool. Now, so my second question is, if you had one last week to live, you were in perfect health, and you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it be? Oh, well, um, I think the first thing is, or I'm visual, so the first thing is, no matter where I go, it's, it's who I'm doing it with, right? So right, right. Clear, clearly, I'm going to take my wife and kids and mm. um, um, someplace we can learn something together. Um, mm. You know, I'd love to go New Zealand or Peru or, you know, nice. something adventurous where we can experience some amazing things together and learn together. Um, cool. You know, from a fulfillment perspective, that's when you say, you yeah, know, that was a good week. It's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. No, that's, that's, that's cool. Keep it simple, right? Exactly. So last question is if you had one piece of advice for anyone out there listening to live a better life, what would it be? Great question. So I'll tell you, for me, um, you know, all this background and did company stuff, some smaller company stuff. But the reality was for me, I, you know, I work hard. I, I found that I was kind of working harder than my bosses and people that own the companies that I work for and so forth. <clears throat> and I wanted to make a bigger impact. And, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to kind of save up some money and I wanted to start a business. And obviously, Hybiti came out of it. That was a couple of years ago. And the thing that resonated with me and it stuck is, you know, what's your motto or your creed? Um, and I forget where I read it, but what stuck in my mind was die with memories, not with dreams. And, and that was, you know, do I go work for somebody else or do I go for it and start something? And what I didn't want to be is, you know, last few years of my life thinking back and say, boy, when I had the energy and the time, I wish. 
you know, and, and there were a few moments now where even now I look back, oh, I probably should have done that differently. Not that I have any regrets, but, you know, so that's one where I'm all in and, you know, no matter what happens, I'm going to have fantastic memories um, and say, I, I gave it my all and did everything um, I could. So, you know, um, and so I think those are probably the, the, that's probably the one I would tell people that, you know, um, just know your motto and live by it. Um, and so that's mine. And, um, you know, uh, we're a product ultimately of our experiences. Right. Um, the end of the day and you know, it doesn't matter your age. If you've got limited experiences, you're just boring. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's, that, you know, you're right, man. Yeah. You know, and, and I've, I've, I've met people that are young and they did take a, a year or two off after college and they saw so many crazy things in this world and they matured beyond their years and they, they've established like this framework of how they're going to conduct their life way more than I did when I was in my mid twenties. And I got to tell you, um, you know, that's where I'm at. Um, you know, so as an example, never before done, I'm taking my wife and kids to Germany for Christmas that's um, awesome. for, for a week and a half and they're going to miss a week of school. But again, these are going to be great experiences for them. They're 11 and a half. Right. My wife and I are going to enjoy it. You know, I've been there for business, but you know, to take the family there and, um, experience what they do there, I think is just going to be fabulous. Um, right. there's going to be amazing experiences that all four of us can, can have with us for the rest of our lives. So, you know, that's, that's something that, um, I just think folks need to figure out what that creator motto is and, and live it. That's amazing. I really like that a lot. And I think a lot of people are going to resonate with that statement when they hear this. So that's super cool. Now, one thing that I, I forgot to mention is we were talking earlier, Rick, about, you know, using hashtags. So hashtag hydrogen water, like on Instagram or Facebook, you want to talk about that really quick before we head off? Yeah. You know, um, uh, so one of the hashtags that we use on any post and it seems like anybody that's doing anything related to a product um, or a review of a hydrogen water product is they're hashtagging hydrogen water. There's a couple related hashtags, but that seems to be the one that's got the most um, activity and I follow it and, it and I get a lot of great information about new products. Um, you know, and oh, you know, and it's funny, we touched on these machines and so forth, but what we're seeing, and you can buy these, there's a little machine that you can literally open up your, a brand new um, um, bottle of water and you screw the machine on the top, you turn it upside down and the water oh. will drop into the machine a little bit and then it'll liberate the hydrogen out of it. So I don't know how long it takes. You know, people seem to think they, they work really well for them, which is fantastic. I learned about that following that hashtag, really cool <laughs> machine. Um, you know, so... There's a lot of products out there. I've met some influencers, you know, health and wellness influencers. Say, hey, I tried it. It was a competitor's product. I tried this. What do you think? I'm jumping on it, reaching out to them now. They're trying Hyvita and they're ambassadors for us. So it's just, you know, it's, it's a great little kind of way to, to communicate within this little niche of a community that we're building. Super cool, man. All right, Rick. Well, so where can listeners go to find out more about Hyvita and connect with you personally? Is there anywhere that you would want them to go? Yeah, so our website, HiVita.com, which is H-Y, which stands for hydration or, or hydrogen, Vida, V-I-D-A, which is Spanish for life. So HiVita.com, um, you know, and on social, our handle is at Hyvita Brands on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and so forth. Um, you know, and you can find us on LinkedIn and that sort of thing. We've got a couple of YouTube videos now. Nice thing about those six letters, Hyvita, they're... It's interesting. Those are probably six letters that were never used on Google before. Um, so uh -huh. when you search Hyvita, we show up, um, you know, so, which is great. Um, if you don't know how to search for Hyvita, you got to do a little more pecking to find us yet. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting there. Um, you know, so yeah, there's a lot of literature out there. There's some direct, uh, we can direct you to some not-for-profit organizations. There's a couple of them out there that are just wealths of knowledge about what's going on with hydrogen and posting publications and articles and this sort of thing. And, you know, it's really, at some point it's going to be an industry. The hydrogen kind of consumption will be a particular industry and we'll end up having conferences and 
you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how this whole thing transpires next five to 10 years. Yeah, no, I totally see it blowing up, man. So, well, Rick, thanks so much for being on, man. It was honestly an honor and privilege to have you on. And I'm so glad you took time out of your busy schedule because I know you're a busy man. So I really appreciate it, man. No, oh, thanks, man. I, 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 I had fun t- talking about this, you know, as you can imagine, it's my passion and I'm just honored that you took interest to, to get me on the air and tell my story. And I just hope at some point I've at least, you know, got some people to think and maybe, um, you know, uh, maybe help them out somehow. Cool. Well, Rick, we'll speak soon, man. Thanks for being on. All right. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it.